Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of December 21st, 2017. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I'll be presiding. This is our last meeting of this year and of this term. It's also the longest night of the year, and it is my great ambition to make sure that that isn't actually realized here tonight. It will not be the longest night of the year here. With so, as is our custom, we open up before we convene and determine a quorum. We open up the floor to the public to speak on any topic that they're choosing. Um, we simply ask that you keep remarks uh, under three minutes. You identify yourself when you step up, uh, state your name and address for the public record and uh, respect the, the, the decorum of the chamber. And with that, I will ask Mr. Roy C. Martin to step up, please. Seeing as I'm the only person here, all right. Well, no. Well, yes. okay. uh, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Conn Street, Northampton, Massachusetts, 01060. All right. As I said to all of you before, all right, we must remember that there is POWs and MIAs that never came back and we have not found and we're still finding bodies here and there, buried in pits and stuff like that. And there's probably still POWs from uh, Vietnam and Korea, right? That they've got old <coughs> but they're probably somewhere there. Anyway, right, let's have a prayer for them on Christmas Day, right? I would appreciate that. And uh, they are our fallen veterans, right? And all veterans should be honored, right, on Christmas Day. Thank you. Now, right, on to something else. One more thing, right? I, uh, I have a little problem with uh, Northampton housing, right? Uh, I saw the other day where uh, Northampton housing had, hired, had fired two persons of color, right? for some little infraction. And, uh, and then it came to my knowledge that two other persons of color last week were fired, which meant that the four people of color, right, are no longer working there. And it seems to be that it is an all white uh, person's working there. Now, right, they also have hired out, out of all of the housing complexes, they've hired two or three, four guys and they're paying them $100 a month, taking off their rent, all right, you know, to do that work. Now, uh, if these people are getting $100 a month, where's the $100 a month coming from? Is that coming out of her budget, number one? And number two, right, you know, if they're taking union workers' jobs and they're taking jobs for $100 a month that these people are getting paid thirteen fifty an hour for, Right, and they're not working there because they're fired, right? How many more is she going to fire and hire out of there for $100 a month? Uh, you know, I don't think, you know, I think this whole board ought to sit down and take a look at CARA, right, and find out what is going on with Northampton Housing Authority because I don't think it's fair at all. To the, to the maintenance people, it ain't fair, right? And to the people that's living in Northampton Housing Authority. And I've heard complaints from other housing authorities, Maple Street and up there, right? Same, same type of stuff going on. So I, I bring it to you people, because I took it to the Gazette, and they didn't want to know all they didn't want to hear nothing. And you know, Roy Martin, they didn't want to hear from him anyway. Right, you know, he's a husband. And, uh, and I took it to News Channel 22, and of course, yeah, we'll be in touch. <laughs> they never do. All right, so anyways, but now I bring it to you people, <coughs> right? Somebody do something. Yes, I hear the buzzer. Thank you. Have a good day. And Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you very much. Remember that prayer. <coughs> There's no one else signed up here. Is anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Laura, is there a way that a video on these are, is uh, enabled? Or uh, is it only this one? The monitor is dead. Yeah, oh, I'm having technical difficulties with it. It's but. dead. Okay, thanks. I'll look so up I'm going to ask the administrative assistant to call the roll, please. Sure. Councillor Bidwell. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. All right, we have a quorum. We are convened.
Um, <coughs> there are no public hearings scheduled for today. Uh, one minute announcements. Nothing. All right. No one minute announcements. Your Honor, communications to proclamations from the mayor. Nope, he's good. Uh, all right, we move right into resolutions, and this is item 17.419. Uh, it's a resolution to support the uh, $15 minimum wage with a positive recommendation from community resources uh, from the 18th of this month. Is there a motion for an order for Move approval. Second. 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 Discussion, please. I can start off if that, start off if that works. And um, this was presented in Monday's meeting of the Committee on Community Resources. And uh, I thank the committee at that time, and I'll, I'll thank them again now for taking the time to consider it, because it, it was the only item on the agenda. And other counselors came as well, Councilor Nash, Councilor Blarch, uh, Councilor Murphy, um, all turned out to discuss this. And the purpose of the meeting was to invite comment from the public as well, um, including business owners in Northampton and uh, uh, labor representatives and, and a cross section. So I think that's good that that outreach was done. And I, I'm, I'm thankful to the chair and, and the committee for doing that. I'll basically say what I said then, which is, um, and not try to repeat what I said at the last council meeting, which is if we don't increase the minimum wage, um, that is a policy choice in and of itself. Uh, because as it stands, because of cost of living increases that happen every year, the minimum wage and its value essentially gets ratcheted down year after year after year. And adjustments to the minimum wage undoubtedly have um, diverse and complex effects in our local economy. Um, but so does the decision to allow the minimum wage to decline uh, continually. Um, <coughs> so it's my belief that the minimum wage, if we're going to have it, it we should have it. It should be indexed to cost of living increases. Um, adjusting it to 15 kind of corrects for historical um, uh, uh, diminishment in its value. And then the legislation, the spirit of which this resolution supports, would peg the value going forward to inflation and, and cost of living increases. Um, so I think that's important. I think that uh, you know, economic prosperity and economic justice are not incompatible. And that's an ideal that um, is, at, is at the root of this for me. And so I'll leave it at that. I'd like to hear what other counselors have to say about it. I'm happy to answer any questions if I can. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Councillor O'Donnell. Um, we did hear on, on Monday night from a number of people from both the business community as well as, uh, as Councillor O'Donnell noted, from the uh, Franklin Hampshire Labor Council and from the Pioneer Valley uh, Coalition for the Living Wage. <clears throat> both spoke in favor of raising the minimum wage and put it in the context as we spoke about we have had a um, and as I said on Monday night in full disclosure I was one of many in the community including yes Northampton jobs with justice numerous uh, um, community groups that gathered signatures for the upcoming um, for to put on the, a question on the ballot to raise the minimum wage uh, those signatures have been gathered, and uh, at the same time, there are the two pieces of legislation in the House and Senate um, that both look to a four-year incremental raise of, uh, of a dollar per year to raise to $15. And so the resolution supports really that legislation, even though, um, I mean, the hope, hopefully we won't need to go to a ballot question if that legislation does pass sometime in the spring. We know our state representative is in support of it. I have been involved in lobbying efforts on that behalf. Um, <clears throat> so I know we, we also heard, uh, and of course where it, a, a number of things we heard from Councillor Murphy who talked about the really being, being able to pay attention to the local issues. I mean, it's, it's true, we are in a, a very <coughs> We're in a unique community, and we have a lot of small businesses and a lot of retail. And 
there are concerns people have raised about the impact of business on businesses however we have had this already uh, recently we looked at what happened from eight dollars to eleven dollars and I don't think we saw the kinds of um, impact that that a lot of people were concerned about and then as Councillor Donald noted looking at the historical data even presently at eleven dollars an hour the earning power is closer to a 1968 scenario rather than 2017 so um, the indexing is the most important piece of the legislation because we have to get to a point where we're no longer trying to push for a raise in a, a minimum wage that will adjust to the inflation and cost of living and have something that automatically does that so for those reasons i'm really happy to co-sponsor this resolution i should note that we actually have been all of us have been in receipt of uh, written testimony that will be submitted into the public record for the most part and, and i think you've all had an opportunity to read them so um other comments and discussion or a quick technical amendment at some point I'm happy sure. to defer uh, it's, it's very brief okay. um, it would um, uh, just an amendment to the last uh, paragraph um, because the original sponsor in the Senate um, is no longer a member of the Senate um, I would like to uh, change that to reflect that um, the person who I would say is sort of leading the effort in the State Senate is not technically a co-sponsor so what I would like to do is uh, delete the words uh, the sponsors of and then the bill numbers so just leave the names and then I would like to change Senator Donnelly uh, to Senator Friedman and that's just the technical correction I'd like to make um, uh, is there a second is to the change Thank you. Discussion on the proposed amendment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay. Councilor Bidwell. Um, thank you. As I've said before, I've thought the National Fight for 15 campaign is critically important, and I see this as, a, as, as our local uh, Massachusetts level component of it. I particularly like the indexing feature. Um, I'm really pleased that uh, we all agreed to hit the pause button to take uh, to take in a little local commentary I think on something like this it is our job to uh, act on something that is sort of a macro issue but to do it taking into account local impacts and uh, as has been noted we've heard a lot of uh, a lot of comments from businesses from nonprofits uh, uh, from the school department, from, from, from our finance director. Um, I think we have to uh, just hope that uh, for the most part this will have very beneficial results. The thing is we never, we, we never know. I don't, I'm not sure the shift from 8 to 11 can be compared to the, the shift from 11 to 15 in terms of impacts. I think there probably will be some businesses that will that will do very well there will be some that uh, may struggle there will be some that will struggle and and find innovations and adaptations that will make them more efficient and better um, and there's we've heard a couple of restaurants that predict that flat out they'll go out of business time time will tell but there will be probably some 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 uh, sectors and some uh, entities that are that are hit more than others nonetheless uh, uh, I think I think it's a I think it's appropriate that we move forward. We just need to understand that there's unexpected consequences for sure, uh, and we have done our job I think by by taking into account local impacts. One of the things that we did here at the local level, of course, was um, certain categories of, of of wage earners are are not um, supporting a family on the on the wages that they earn teenagers working at, uh, at, a, at a deli or an ice cream shop are sort of the classic local examples. And so there's been some talk of whether there should be or could be a, a, a second tier uh, addressed in the, in, the, in the legislation. And I raised the possibility at the committee meeting Monday 
of, of, of amending the resolution to ask our representatives to, uh, to at least address that. I had a chance to talk with John Robertson today. He's the, the legislative director for Mass Municipal Association. I was curious to hear his, his take on it. And, and MMA, just so everyone knows, is not taking a, a formal position on it because municipalities are exempt um, from, from minimum wage law. But he has been following the matter pretty closely. And his understanding is that there is indeed, uh, in this very fluid legislative situation, there, there is discussion of some version of another tier, whether it would be by sector of the economy or by age. We all agree there's real problems in how you'd ever define that. But uh, apparently there is, there is discussion uh, there, and I think it's, it's, it's good that there be discussion there. But I've, I've, I've decided to not try and come up with the language to actually amend the resolution, so I'm not going to do that. But I do intend uh, to uh, with our own <coughs> legislative delegation, encourage them to, to at least look at the possibility of some of some second tier, which would, I think, could make a very big difference. Not just bottom line in businesses, but the, but uh, teenagers' access to summer jobs that uh, that we worry about uh, might be uh, over time uh, cut off as a, as an unintended consequence of this. Um, we did also note that. I heard from a couple of retailers who said they thought it was unfortunate they were taking this up during the absolute busiest time of the year for them when there's no way they could come here to be here. But perhaps at second reading, if we do, the, if we go on to second reading in January, then it could be taken. Then, then we might hear from some other folks then. So I'll, I'll, I'll vote for it, but I just wanted to say that about local impacts. Council LaBarge. Yeah. Um, I was very pleased to get the information from our financial director, Susan Wright, and um, I'm glad that we're not doing the second reading until January anyways. But I have great concerns from the superintendent of the cost of money that is going to be coming out of that budget for the school department. But Susan's I'm worried about because she cannot give us a direct estimate of how it's going to affect the city. The tears, I really do support that. I support it 100%, and I'm hoping. And it's a shame that maybe we can think about adding some language in January on this um, resolution of adding a tear on that. I think that would be very supportive to do that. Um, talking with business owners and the strugglings that they're having, I think with the tears of them training young students from the high schools, coming in to work in their businesses, all that training and the expense of the training, and then they leave because of school. So it becomes very difficult when you own a business and you're talking about a loss of money. You're looking at taxes, you're looking about health insurance. The cost is very, very high. But we also have a problem too. We have many people living in Northampton and I've talked with some of them who do work in the businesses here where they not only have an apartment for themselves, but they have two to three other people with them to help with the cost of the rent, which is phenomenal. And even now in East Stanton is not cheap anymore. That's becoming high. So, and I'm not gonna mention about my business because it's a conflict as far as I can see as a council. I don't wanna talk about a family business. I want to talk about the businesses that I know locally in the area that will find it very, very difficult with the small businesses. But I also need to look at what we call families trying to survive. And this is a really big problem. People are having a lot of problems. Their food, taking care, their car insurance to go to work and so forth like that. <coughs> You just cannot live on an income with a minimum wage today. And I'm gonna support this because I feel that people need to have a good quality of life and they're not having it right now. So I'm supporting it. Councilor Nash. 
Um, so yeah, I've been you know I've been doing some research on this, and um, and so my thoughts are still kind of all over the place. <coughs> um, but um, so I, I one of the things I did I um, I was I reached out to. Uh, Patricia Crosby with the Regional Employment Board, mm -hmm. and um, she uh, provided, uh, so, you know, these figures. We have uh, 95,000 jobs in the Franklin, Hampshire area. 74% um, are in the private sector. Um, of the top five industries, um, uh, education services sector <coughs> is number one uh, at 24%. 16% for healthcare and social assistance se sector. Now, that one and the next two, Patricia felt were gonna be uh, pretty impacted by this. Uh, the retail sector, and uh, which is at 12%, and accommodations, uh, um, hotels, and uh, food service sector, which is at 9%. So that 37% in the middle of these five industry areas are probably going to be um, impacted in some way, large or small. And, um, and, and I think um, also in particular in the Northampton economy that, you know, we don't have a corporate economy here, that the business is downtown, you know, if, if you want to, you, you can walk in the door and you can meet the owner of that business probably within about two minutes if you ask for their name or if you just go in to introduce yourself. Um, and that, um, and I've, I've really appreciated uh, the feedback we've been getting. Um, I, I really like Judy Harrell's uh, note um, and the, the challenge of training young people. Mm -hmm. um, um, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm, I want to say, I'm gonna be supporting this measure um, it, with the idea that, um, that it, it's not gonna be this is one tool within the bigger package of policy tools that we can use to help people. And one of the tools that we could use is actually tax people who earn a lot of money. Well, f the federal government made a choice recently to not be real helpful around matters just like this just the day before. And, um, and that this is, this is a way that we, we can push back. And, ask that the, the, the wage floor <coughs> actually be raised. Um, that, um, you know, that it, it, the, as, you know, somebody who's worked in human services, um, you know, that those direct care workers, you know, for uh, DMH, DDS, uh, people at uh, nursing homes, um, uh, people at that front line of education, they're all below this. They're, and they're the ones who are, they're putting their hands on people, they're working directly with individuals. They're doing really important work, and that um, and and trained work. We're not talking uh, about what what Judy was describing of training some young people to put scoops of ice cream mm -hmm. in in a bowl, and and it, which is terrific. We're talking about people who have real skills, and um, and there's a you know within that thirty per seven percent, there's a lot of people who are providing great service and also uh, their, their work isn't being fully valued. Um, the, the last thing I want to add is that, um, that um, we, um, that the, the state is part of this, state revenues that, I mean, all of those, some, some of those sectors I talked about there have to do with state contracts for the services that are provided and that the the service organizations that we deal with in this area are bound by those contracts with those set rates. And that the, the state, if it chooses to go forward with this, which I hope they do, they're gonna need to raise a little revenue, um, which has not been, uh, the state's been shying away from that for a long time, to <coughs> um, provide the funds for you know, staff uh, providing these services. Um, so um, anyway, we, I'm going to support this, but we need to be mindful of creating other policies that will go in conjunction with it, and I expect that those things, I'm hopeful those things are going to happen. Um, so thank you. Who else was not spoken yet? Council Shara. 
Um, I want to just give a little gratitude for Susan Wright and for um, Superintendent Provost, as Council of the Barge mentioned. They both pulled together fairly significant projections for us on pretty short in pretty short order um, for Monday's meeting. So um, I, I appreciate them doing that. Um, and also everyone who came on Monday, almost every councilor was there, and then and we had a lot of great public comment and a lot of people who took the time to send us emails and letters and um, and I you know I, I really feel for the businesses that say that the previous increase and actually I've heard from some that have have told me that the previous increase was really a challenge for them um, and they're not sure if they can find a way to do another step increase um, because their costs have increased but their revenues haven't and so. Um, that's that's hard. I don't think that they're exaggerating when they say that they're really on on the edge, um, and and I agree that it's very different to ask a large corporation to absorb something like this than a very small business with with a few employees. Um, but you know, I, I feel for workers who who can't make ends meet. the The idea of a tiered system, I think, is attractive. How to make that fair is challenging. I don't I don't know how you come up with a system that's fair. I think our economy's changed. I think some of these jobs that we considered first time jobs. <coughs> are now you know, jobs that people need to support themselves, support their families. Um, so that's, and sometimes they're combining that job with multiple jobs just to make ends meet. And that's really, it's, it's hard to figure out a way to make that system fair for everyone. Um, so it, it just feels to me like many people are just hanging on. And I really wish we could find a way to holistically address that. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Nash that I don't, I don't think our new tax plan is gonna, gonna get us there, but um, it would be, I, I hope someday we can find out, find a way to, to kind of uh, deal with all aspects of this and, and look at it without pitting, it, it always feels like we're pitting one side against each other, the other, and that's just, I don't think anyone wants to do that, and it's not really a way to just get us all where we need to be and have everyone have a safe, living wage. Um, so I appreciate the idea of indexing. Um, and uh, you know, I hope that we can get to a place where we don't need to make these jumps that are really hard for businesses to absorb. Um, and that, you know, I think this is a step in the right direction. But I, you know, I really just feel for everyone that's that's having a tough time with all of it. Uh, anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? Council Murphy? I, I feel kind of unique here because I've been a union shop steward and I'm also a small business person. I think I'm unique here that I sign a million and a half to two million dollars worth of paychecks on the front side. So I employ people. <clears throat> and I mean, my business won't be tremendously affected by this, but many small businesses will. And, you know, I grew up here. I know a lot of the local business people. And we're not, we're not talking about union jobs. Usually they're skilled and they they pay well above a $15 minimum because their people are you know are licensed or in some way performing a profession that they've come up through the ranks in and they're being paid well but this is for entry-level positions I'm concerned because the Seattle studies seem to say that about $13 is when people start cutting jobs and, and I have a lot of empathy for people at the entry level and I don't want to see them lose their jobs because we, we raise the threshold so high that small businesses have no choice but to cut them. You know, I'd somewhere in there is a <coughs> place of balance where uh, we can get their incomes as good as we can get it without it costing people's jobs. Uh, my concern is we're very happy to sign on to this without a complete review. I, I looked at a number of studies, but in the world of examining studies, and particularly in a world where Seattle, which is the real best place to check this out, hasn't really even spent any time at $15 yet, so we really don't know what the outcome is going to be, but that's the best study. You know, I think we're kind of rushing it. I mean, I was technically educated. I like to read the studies. I like to be confident the facts support what we're choosing to do, and the jury's not in on that yet, and yet we're very happy to take the plunge. And local economies are a lot more volatile than national economies are because the scale is lower. And very much um, a downtown that sells posters and jelly beans and ice cream cones and, you know, you can't buy an extension cord on Main Street anymore. It, it's a very vulnerable mix of businesses that we have, <coughs> many of which 
thrive on disposable income, and if that goes down, then there's a problem, that, that we're ready to take the leap and with the, the, the house of cards nature of our local economy, just move a card and say, let's see what happens. You know, let's do a social experiment or an economic <coughs> experiment and say, okay, let's see what happens to you with just a $15 a, an hour. That, that seems kind of cavalier on our part. So I'm going to abstain from this. I think there's a point we could reach where it would work and wouldn't cost jobs. I am not confident we understand it well enough to go out and pick a number like 15 and say, let's go for that. That's the one everyone else is using. You know, I think that could wind up hurting the very people we want to help because their businesses go away or their job goes away. Uh, you know, somewhere in there, statistics will tell us <coughs> the sweet spot is where you can get away with getting people as much as you can for their entry level position and not killing the goose that they're working for. But I don't think we put enough time into studying it. I think we're sort of saying, hey, let's get on the bandwagon. And just my inclination to want to understand fully what I'm doing before I do it is why I'm going to abstain from this. Not because I don't spiritually believe that entry level people should be well paid, but I don't think we should pick a number that results in them losing their job either. So without understanding it well enough to move forward, I really, I really don't want to be on board for that. But uh, as I said, I do have a lot of empathy for them. And I do very much support the concept of tiering uh, entry level jobs for young people because frankly, it's good that they get paid, but they take a lot of intangibles away from their first job that serves them as well as the money does. You know, they learn the responsibility of showing up on time. They learn the difficulty of dealing with the public across the counter. <laughs> you know, that it, some people are unreasonable and you just got to deal with it because you're being paid to deal with it. You know, there's intangibles that they get. And then also the seniors that I've mentioned relative to my involvement uh, with a nonprofit that hires them. You know, they're, I hire a bunch of retired people who are working for enrichment reasons beyond what they get paid. They get paid a number that works for them. But there are other reasons, quality of life reasons, why they still want to be in the workplace. And I think it, it injures them because I know in that environment I'm going to have to not hire somebody back if we hit $15 an hour. And that would be unfortunate because a lot of what they work for is camaraderie. And one of them's not going to be there anymore if this occurs because we are on a fixed income. We just can't afford it. So um, the, the long and short of it is, for all of those reasons, I'm going to abstain. Anyone else? Councilor Barnes, did you want to say something? Yes, I think all of us counselors feel that we don't want to see any businesses here in Northampton just fold, because I don't want to see that happen. That's why I think the tier is a great idea. I really do, especially for our students. When we're hearing from business owners, which I have, that they would have to lay off, you don't want that to happen. So I am hoping that some kind of a language through the state is put in there that is not gonna let something like this happen. I mean, we just cannot afford to keep losing businesses here in the city of Northampton. <coughs> and I've been told people that have left the center of Northampton didn't come out to give the real reasons why they left. They just wanted out and that was it and didn't talk about their reasons, but some of the business people told me. So I think it's, this is serious, and we need to look at it very, very carefully. We have our hands full. Here we have families trying to survive, to bring in the food, like I said before, and it's become very, very critical. So. I am just hoping that we something can be done here so that we don't lose the businesses. We don't see owners of the businesses, small businesses, laying off their staff. Because to me, these people even working for them and getting laid off, they're not gonna have a job. So somewhere, something has to be done here and hopefully through the state and through the state house, but they will look at the seriousness on this and 
I am hoping, and Councilor Ryan O'Donnell, you really like doing resolutions and ordinances. Maybe you can think about some language with a cheer or something, because I think it's very critical that that's added in here. Um, the, you know, it's interesting. The, uh, we frequently talk about what we're supposed to do is try and reconcile competing interests. And the unfortunate thing is, is that, and usually the case, most of our conflicts actually evolve from battles that are fought elsewhere, but we end up fighting for what scraps are left. What I want the state to do is establish a progressive income tax, or as Councilor Nash cited, uh, the data that he cited, we're a service economy. We don't make things anymore. Um, and in fact, we're a service economy that subsidizes each other. That's Councilor Murphy's point. The reinvestment of the money, uh, you know, I sell a piece of pie to someone who's going to maybe eventually cut my hair. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> that, that we circulate this revenue and this money, <coughs> but these meager funds and these meager circumstances. And we have instead, we have a taxation system that was just graphically illustrated on the federal level, which is rewarding and providing coverage for the largest earners, and earners is a generous description in my, by my reading, uh, but the people who garner the vast amount of wealth, which is not available to a service economy community. We're not getting someone pulling up in a, you know, a state-of-the-art Tesla coming to buy a cup of coffee here in Northampton. They're not recharging our economy. For the most part, they're draining our economy. So we're rather than, you know, I think of the state and the federal government have actually demurred, and in, in the federal government's case, have actually just pirated. But in the state's version, we have accommodated when we were so worried about being tax Massachusetts that what we did was we reduced the requirements that we put on revenue gathering through uh, high income earners and corporations to promote those businesses in the trickle down theory that it all would benefit from the, the great largesse that would, bef you know, would come from them, which has not been realized. And as such, it's been deferred to property taxes. And the responsibility has been borne by local communities who have to actually charge a very regressive tax system, property tax. It's not based on your, how much money you have. It's based on how, someone, how much someone values your property. And thereby, if you're on a fixed income, the house that you bought for $68,000 in 1970 is now assessed at $350,000. Your income is not going up. You can't subsidize, you've paid down your mortgage, you can't subsidize the taxes, the property taxes, the regressive tax system that the state has left us with. And I'm frustrated because these are the fights that we continually have mm -hmm. about the competing interests on the ground level here, pitting neighbor against neighbor because of abdication of responsibility by people in very expensive suits who don't listen very closely to the ground. So I, my inclination is to actually support this because what we're trying to do is at least mitigate their aberrant behavior in some way, in whatever way we can possibly. To Council Murphy's point about the $15, it's, it's not $15 out the gate. It's working progressively towards $15 and then would be indexed to the cost of inflation. We don't know what inflation is going to be, and we certainly know that $15 in so many years is certainly going to be worth less, at least if trends hold. Um, and and I think, I you know, I, I respect your concern on that level, but I don't. I just want to make the point that it's not fifteen dollars out the gate once the legislation passes or the ballot question passes. It actually is. It transitions to that slowly, because I think part of the what I mean, obviously, what inspired that was the concerns that you talk about. The, the sticker shock, the inability to make the adjustment from an enormous leap like that. And it, it's t I, it, it, it is frustrating because we're apologizing for someone else. We're apologizing to the local business and we're apologizing to the local residents. We're sorry 
but you, we all find ourselves in these desperate straits because of something that's actually beyond our ability to manage or control. So our job is to mitigate and try and reduce and try to reconcile those, those competing interests. So that's just me on a soapbox expressing my frustration that I think I've, I've expressed from day one when I first got sworn in, I don't know, 350 years ago. So I, I understand and feel your pain, to quote Bill Clinton, um, <laughs> as you struggle with this because I share the same struggle. And it is maddening that it comes to this. It comes to this where we have to we we have to go hat in hand to a state that's been unresponsive, and bears a significant responsibility for the circumstances we find ourselves in. Um, Council Klein, you can get the chief. Uh, all right, it's a resolution, but what's what's the council's pleasure? Roll call or roll call. Roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. I abstain. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheehan. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading, and by our rules, that will be will be revisited in our next term uh, at our January fourth meeting. Now we come. <coughs> excuse me, and. Blessedly, there are no presentations, so we come up to the consent agenda, and this is, includes the approval of minutes for December 7th, 2017. Uh, also, oh, that's it. That's all it includes. Right. Wow. <laughs> Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now we recess for Finance Committee, and Council Murphy has the floor. Thank you very much. Um, Councilor Murphy. Here. Present. Present. Excellent. The first thing is to approve the minutes of our December 7th meeting. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Excellent. Any changes or additions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Opposed? No. All right. Uh, financial orders. The first order we have, and the only order we have, is 17434 in order to appropriate free cash for a fire alarm system upgrades at the DPW. Ordered that $20,000 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance for the upgrades of an existing fire alarm system at the DPW barn and the installation of a fire alarm system at the DPW administration building. Do we have a motion finance? Make a motion. Second. And the mayor's here to answer questions. submitted this we did ask if it was possible to get two readings it didn't make it on the agenda but obviously mm -hmm. it's the last meeting so we can talk about that in the full meeting but um, this is actually a project that we had anticipated doing as part of the capital uh, program um, you may recall last year in the capital program we did, a, um, we did an upgrade to Forbes library um, and upgraded their fire um, alarm system uh, that they they had sort of an, an older antiquated system and we upgraded it to the same kind of Keltron system that we have in all of our more modern buildings that actually is connected directly to the fire station and so um, this was a project we had in mind to do um, as part of the capital program um, but we decided to try to move it forward and get it um, uh, just try to get the project done um, just because of the fact that it was a uh, kind of a safety issue. Um, you may have read recently, well, last winter, a, uh, a DPW uh, a barn in Tolland burned, uh, and actually a couple of weeks ago, a DPW facility in Sandisfield had a freak fire and burned, um, which is um, tragic <coughs> for them. Um, luckily, no lives were lost, but their entire fleet of snow plowing equipment was lost um, at the worst possible time. Uh, so we decided to try to just bring this forward. Free cash has been certified. This is something we were going to pay for out of free cash and to ask whether the council would sort of approve it on kind of a, on a faster track so that we could get this project in motion. There's a fire alarm system in the barn now that's sort of an older antiquated one. It's not connected to the, uh, to the central fire alerting system that we have at dispatch. There's, um, there's also uh, 
some non-hardwired uh, alarm systems at the administration building. This would integrate all of them on the same type of a system. There'd be panels uh, for each system, and it would be integrated with our dispatch center. So this is to try to use some of the uh, free cash balance to do that. Questions for the mayor? Council. Uh, actually, what you just described is just bringing them up to code, yeah. right? Uh, we want to modernize them, yes, yeah. that's correct. But I mean, modernizing, I mean, you know, freestanding smoke detectors in the administrative building yeah. is not, would not pass code, would not be if, if there were any renovations or. Exactly, uh, yes. Yeah. So we want to, uh, we want to get that up to date. Um, but the main, the other piece of it is also the barn because we do right. have, um, you know, welding equipment. We have um, fuels. We have oils. We have other kinds of things that are stored. Settling in there, you have. Um, yeah. So, um, so it's, you know, again, we have a system there now that, much like the library, the library had a system that was 20 or 30 years old, um, and uh, and we wanted, we just did that upgrade. Most of our other buildings, we've done upgrades on over time. Obviously, the police and fire station have state of the art because those are newer. Um, and most of our schools have new systems. So these were a couple of buildings that we wanted to address. Any other questions for the mayor? Good. No, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 We do have one more. We have started printing them on the back. So uh, we have started printing them on the back, so I didn't miss one. I just hadn't turned a page over yet. This is 17435. This is an order to pay bills from a prior fiscal year. Order that the council authorizes the payment of $1,088 in prior fiscal year bills. That's FY17. Um, one of them is a DPW bill for bark mulch for uh, $172. And uh, that's the first time I've ever seen AEIOU on here. Uh, it's pre employment physicals. Um, fire Department, $2,730. Police Department, $500 and $46, that was for February, May the police for 75, June the police for 75, uh, June central services for 135, and uh, May and June for DPW, $1,355. Again, the total is $5,088, and these are bills from fiscal year 17. We have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Sec okay, and the mayor's here to answer questions about these. If there are any. The bark mulch is pretty self explanatory The bark mulch is the easy one. AEIOU, that's actually just the name of a company um, <laughs> that, uh, that does um, many of our medical exams and medical screenings, uh, particularly for firefighters and for uh, police, and in some cases, some of our, um, uh, some of our personnel that uh, like, uh, work at the uh, wastewater treatment plant get vaccinations. Um, it's just sort of those kinds of things. So this is actually a a series of really small bills that were um, uh, inadvertently sent to uh, HR instead of going to different departments. And so, and some of them were from May, from June, um, and so they missed the cutoff of June 30th. So we need authorization in order to pay them. Um, uh, Council LaBarge. Mayor, are you looking at two readings on this one also? I was going to, uh, these are the, yeah, I was going to ask for that since, uh, again, carrying it over. Um, would delay the payment of these bills further, and we'd like to pay them in the same year if we could. Yeah. Any other questions? The mayor, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Um, I know of no new business since we're at the end of the session, so uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank right. you. All right, so we come out of recess and come back in a regular session, and we dive right back into financial orders. Item 17.429, this is an order uh, to appropriate free, uh, free cash stabilization, capital stabilization. This is the second reading. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please, Laura. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Park. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Yes. All right, that passes in second reading. Um, item 17.430 is in order to appropriate free crash cash to MPS McKinney Vento Transportation Fund. Uh, second reading. Second. Seconded. Uh, further discussion? Oh, Laura. Okay. Um, Councilor Dwight. Yes. 
Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. All right. That passes in second reading as well. Item 17.431. This is a transfer from uh, landfill closure fund to the solid waste cell one account. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion. We're good? Okay. Count Count Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. So that passes in second reading. <laughs> Item 17.432, this is an order to transfer retained earnings to water and sewer stabilization and vehicle replacement. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Take it away, Laura. Sure. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Goodwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. All right, that passes in second reading. Item 17.433, this is in order to establish $1,000 threshold for personal property tax exemption. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and second. Discussion. Laura. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. All right, that passes in second reading. Item 17.434, this is in order to appropriate free cash for the fire alarm upgrades at the DPW. This is the first reading, it's what you just heard, with a positive recommendation from the Finance Committee. Move Motion's made. Further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. All right, that passes. Suspend Rule 14. Second, the motions and made second. suspend rules to allow for a second vote, and it's been seconded by Councillor Murphy. Uh, discussion on the suspension of rules? Okay. Was that Councillor Bidwell, or was that you, Councillor? Councillor uh, uh, Council Murphy seconded, and... Uh, speaking with my voice. Good job. Good, <laughs> good speaking. Um, okay. <laughs> The motion's made and seconded to suspend rules. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I'll accept a motion. Move to second reading. Thank second you. it. And, and Councilor Bars is seconded. Any further discussion? Now a roll call. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay, that's passed in second reading. Item 17.435 is in order to pay bills from the prior fiscal year. First Move reading. to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Roll call, please. Um, Councillor O'Donnell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's all right. Losing track. Uh, no, Councillor Shera. <laughs> yes. Uh, Councillor Bidwell. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Suspend okay. Rule 14. Okay, that's second. passed in first reading. The motion's been made to suspend the rules to allow for a second vote by Councillor Labarge and seconded by Councillor Murphy. I did it again. Uh, all those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. Move to approve. Second. Motions made and seconded. Council share this time. We're all with a map tonight. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> did the second. So, any further discussion? Okay. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. All right. That passes in second reading. The next one may uh, we should discuss the possibility of a, two readings in this one as well, but this is item 17.417. This is an ordinance regarding departmental revolving funds with a positive recommendation from uh, finance on November 16th of 2017 and a positive rec uh, recommendation from legislative matters from December 11th, 2017. And uh, Move motions are made. Is there a second? Who's, who seconded? Council, Council LaBarge? Okay. 
yep, you have to speak up so Laura can hear you. That. Um, do you want me to reread the ordinance? Before? I would love to read it. Okay. Boy, so, so done. Um, any discussion on this item? Mm -hmm. Councillor. No, oh, you got it. Go for it. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. Second. Okay. The motion passed in first reading. We're now a suspension of rules has been called for to allow for a second vote. Councillor Labarge made the motion, seconded by Councillor Carney. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? Please say uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Move approval on second reading. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second, second for Councillor Bidwell. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Aye. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. All right. That passes in second reading. We're up to the new business, which is an item that we uh, put on the agenda just in case. Uh, discussion and vote on items, measures to be moved forward to a new council term, which is weeks away. Uh, and for example, the mayor's disapproval of item 17.397, the ordinance establishing restrictions on the use of uh, surveillance technology in public spaces, public places. Um, first of all, I'll accept a motion to actually put this on the floor for discussion. So move. Second. Second. Although it is under new business, so it's not actually a motion. Mm -hmm. But for purposes of discussion, um, we, part of this was is we, we got tricky here is the clock runs out for us to even consider because we can't even discuss or consider <coughs> this item until 10 business days after uh, the, the veto was enacted or invoked. So that runs us out of the calendar year. So the intent of this is with your approval is to, even though by default it might automatically be moved to the next term, but we want to be covered because mm -hmm. it's not addressed in our rules, it's not addressed in the charter, and it's not addressed in Mass General Law. So for the purposes of moving that forward for a discussion on this item and the, mayor, the mayor's proposed revisions, that would be on the agenda for January 4th. Does everyone follow what I was just saying? Yeah. Okay, just, all right. Council Murphy. Uh, Council, the, um, the taxi ordinance uh, is also still out there as well. That one automatically trims. That's gonna come yeah. over without any problems, yeah. all right. That one's actually, in our rules, that's actually now under our new rules, that is not okay. one. So I just want to make sure the, the only thing, this this was not anticipated in the drafting of the rules. So the, uh, so the yeah, situation, yeah. To. So we just want to, this is a belts and suspenders thing, just to keep everything as legit or hyper legit as we possibly can. Councilor O'Donnell? Yeah, and I, uh, by way of explanation, in addition to what uh, the council president just said, the rules for automatic carryover say that things that haven't passed on you know, the second reading or the number of readings that they require get carried over automatically. But the ordinance that was vetoed did pass on two readings. So now we're in right. reading number X. Uh, and we, we can't even discuss it I know. at this point. So ba based, based on our rules that they stand. So, so um, just for safety's sake, uh, can I ask for a vote? And a voice vote will carry this if, if, if you're okay with that. M a motion to carry it over? Yeah. Yes. So accept the motion. To uh, so moved. So moved. Is second. second? And you second? Okay. And may, may I? Yes. Uh, if, I guess for the record, also in the charter, we have to officially uh, acknowledge. acknowledge the veto and enter it into our, our records. Yes. Well, and I guess we'll just state that that's what we are also doing if we haven't done it already. Well, we can do that, on the, and that's what I was thinking. That would What's be that? done on the fourth. So we can't even acknowledge the the, the veto. I, I I understood it that well, if we can't, we can't, and that's fine. But I understood we <coughs> couldn't react to it before ten days, but we could acknowledge it. So if 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 that's not possible, no harm done. But well, I just my concern with acknowledging is it's actually a non it's not an agenda item. 
Okay, well, whatever reference you have. My only concern about that, it's not on the agenda, so the public didn't have a uh, reasonable expectation to anticipate that vote. So, but I take your point. But the January 4th falls within, we have 30 days from the invocation of a veto to react, which January 4th will be within that window. Our meeting after that would not. Should we follow this one? You got it? Okay. We're up to speed. All right, so this is to just moving this measure on to the new term, our first meeting in January 4th, not the organizational meeting on the second. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept one other motion. Move to adjourn. Sure. Yep. Um, I would just like to acknowledge our council president who mm -hmm. has made public that he will not be uh, running for president again. And so I just want to say thank you and um, ask my colleagues here to um, join me in thanking you very much for your very able leadership over the last two years, four years, six wow. years. Six years. Six, six, six years. years. Six years. Six years. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Point of procedure, uh, you will chair the meeting on the right, fourth, on, or, I, I mean, on the organizational meeting. Right. I okay. will, on the second, yes. I will Thank chair you. that meeting by our rules until such time the new president is elected, where, where they will presume that. So, thank you all, actually. And it's a lot, I mean, you know, despite the headlines, it's how some people interpret the headline, I'm not leaving the council. I'm still a counselor. I'll just be moving seats. So for, for those of you who were excited by the prospect of me leaving, I'm sorry. And for those of you who were ticked off that I was leaving saying, what the hell, he just asked for us to vote for him. He's not even gonna get inaugurated. I am, I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna do the work. Just, you're not gonna see me blab, blab, blabbing from this seat. Just from, from this seat. seat. Oh, okay. <laughs> You'll be unmuzzled. And I, would, I will be unmuzzled and unfettered. <laughs> that's, that's quite a thought. I might start by some sleepless nights. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. you give you some pause. So I'll accept uh, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all. Happy solstice. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. That's all. Yes. See you next term. Cool. Yeah.